Hallelujah. We're talking from a place of our, the prophetic David that I have for today. If you can follow me, we're going to three or four scriptures. We start with Amos 3, verse 3. Do two walk together unless they have agreed to do so? Can two walk together unless they have agreed to do so? Now, my brother, my sister, when we see in the beginning of Genesis 1, yes, God made Adam and Eve. Not Adam and Steve. Adam and Eve. And when he made them, he came with an expectation to walk with them. To walk with them in the garden. Hello? And then at that stage, the main temptation not to walk with God before that time was what? Not the serpent with the temptation of a very nice fruit of the tree. Not with a very nice fruit. At the end of this discussion with the enemy, she saw the fruit was good. But the temptation was not the fruit. The temptation was this discussion of let's reason about God. Let's do some reasoning here. There's a place of having a sincere, innocent walk with God where they even didn't know that they were naked. A place of perfection of sincere, innocent walk with God. But the enemy had to bring them into the place of reasoning about a lot of stuff. And so in your walk with God, you can reason a lot about what is right, what is wrong, and why this and why that? Why is God not doing this and why is he doing that? And I don't understand what's happening out there about this stuff and that stuff and whatever. And from that place, I mean, is, is this uh, snake saying, uh, did God indeed say this? Did he not say that because... He could be afraid that you will become like him. Let's talk a little bit about stuff. And in the talking, my brother, you can go from a place where you can have this beautiful walk with God to a place messing out, missing out and messing what is there for that what God has for you here on earth. I'm not talking about going to heaven. You receive Christ, you're going to heaven. I'm talking of making a mess here. In the chance that you will never, forever, 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 forever get again. May God help you. But I need to stand in this place of I will not walk with the reasoning. I will not walk with the discussion of what people say out there. How things are supposed to happen, how things are not supposed to happen. And uh, the, the challenge is the discussion is in your hand. You know, with a cell phone, with a laptop, with a this, with a that. The discussions are going on. And may you fill yourself with Holy Spirit discussion. I'm not talking super spiritual. But I'm saying that you will, you will not walk with lots of those reasoning. Because at the end of the day, you can be taken from a sincere, innocent, beautiful walk with God. Do two walk together unless they have agreed to do in such a way. You must make a decision to walk with the word. You must make a decision to walk with God. It will not just come. When you make the, not the decision to walk with him, automatically the enemy will make the decision to walk with you. You will not make a decision. I decide to walk with lying. I decide to walk with fear, with anxiety, with stress, with Stealing, with lusting, with what inferiority, whatever rubbish there is. You know, you don't make that decision. Hell will make it for you when you don't make the decision to walk with God. It's not like then you choose the darkness. No, you just don't, don't choose the light. And in not choosing the light, darkness can make the decisions for you. Are you, are you with me? Also, oh, please, man. You don't fight darkness. You don't come against the darkness. Hello? You stand with the light, and light will fight darkness. 
you with me. So yeah, I choose to walk with love. God's name is love. And love will fight the fear. Perfect love drives out all fear. I choose to walk with the peace. And the peace will deal with the stress and the anxiety and all those stuff. I choose to walk with the joy of the Lord. That's my strength. And that joy of the Lord, that's my strength. That joy will deal with depression and negativity and all that rubbish. Are you with me? The battle belongs to the Lord, my brother. Tell your neighbor, the battle belongs to the Lord, not to you. Okay. Hallelujah. May God help you. May God help me. Don't agree with confusion. And you can agree with confusion. How can I see? I feel confused about something. In the midst. Now can we, we can discuss this. Or I can go to God and just put God's word in here. And I go with the truth. I go, I walk with the truth. You can fight the dark valley. Or you can walk with your shepherd through the dark valley. And that is, what will your decision be? But we're wasting our lives, wasting the energy, wasting what we have in Christ. And how we deal with the word by fighting the dark valley. God didn't say they will not be the valley. He said, but he will take you through. If you can focus in the darkness, where is the good shepherd? Oh, that's something else. You're going through the valley of the shadow of death. But, but, but you need to know where he is in that valley. Where he is in that valley. That is the biggest thing. To walk. Agree to walk with God. Doesn't matter if it's dark valley. If it's uh, green pastures. If it's still waters. If it's wherever, whatever. I choose to walk with you, Lord. I choose to walk with you. And you will deal with the other rubbish that just rock up to walk with me. Where they had... We have no relationship. I will not walk with that stuff. So the, the, the rubbish can come up in my mind, but then I choose to go with it, or I choose to walk away. It's not your fight. It's not your fight. You humiliate the rubbish. You humiliate the temptation. You humiliate that fear and that stuff. It's real. That's maybe something that you experience, but you humiliate it by ignoring that in the sense of focus on Christ. Remember what we said? Pursue righteousness, pursue love, pursue this. It says, flee from this rubbish and pursue that what is from God. How do you flee from the rubbish? Like this. No. By pursuing love, you are fleeing from the rubbish. You will not give darkness authority. You will not fear the darkness and flee from it. You will pursue the love and in the process you are fleeing the rubbish. Are you with me? Okay, so Amos 3 verse 3, that's it. And then verse 7, surely, surely, surely. Everybody say surely. surely. The sovereign Lord does nothing without revealing his plan to his servants, the prophets. First of all, my brother, I hope you are a servant of God. And secondly, in Christ, the prophet, you are also a prophet. But not in the office of a prophet, that's a different teaching. Not in the office of a prophet in the, in the church of Christ, but... The prophetic is in you. You will rule and reign as a king and a priest. But on earth, there's the third one. That's the prophet. King, prophet, priest. For eternity, king and priest. Prophet now because there's words that need to be fulfilled. And that is the prophetic in you. The capacity God gives you so that you can see the word and see what is God saying for now of what must happen tomorrow. And that prophetic capacity God is giving you. And he wants to reveal it. Why? He wants to walk with you. He wants you to agree to walk with him. To walk with him. That was his desire. When he said, Adam, where are you? It was not, not like God was confused. He knew exactly where Adam was. <laughs> Adam, where are you? In the garden. Oh, I've lost you. No. <laughs> not at all. God knew where he was, but he wanted Adam to respond, to come. And in the coming, sometimes there's the fear, because maybe we made drug, we made dry, we made what? We, made, we, we messed up. But still, God wants you to come. Even if it's in a place of discipline, even if it's a place of rebuking, there's no shame through the blood of Christ. There's no shame. There's forgiveness. 
there's an amazement of, as you respect the blood. That you will take your forgiveness. You come and you take your forgiveness because you respect the blood. Because you respect what he has done for you. And that's why. And at the end of the day, you will break through. Not promising you will never do this again. Promise I will never do this again. Promise I will ne- Yes, you can make a commitment. Yes is yes, no is no. You must make the commitment. But uh, first of all, you must take your forgiveness through the blood. Is it not Revelation it says? Ah, uh, 12, 11, something like that. That says, you will overcome by the blood of the Lamb. First of all, you take your forgiveness, you settle the past. When you look back, you see the awesome, awesome grace and forgiveness of Christ. You will overcome through the blood and then the word of your testimony. You live the word. You live the testimony of Christ, the word. You live the word and you live according to the word and that you didn't love your life even unto death. Amen. Let it be so in Jesus' name. Surely, surely, everybody says surely. surely. The sovereign Lord does nothing without revealing his plan. He wants to reveal his heart to you. He wants to reveal his heart to you, what is happening inside. First of all, God says, choose me to walk with me. Can we help there? Somebody can, can help uh, anytime. So, what are we saying? First of all, you choose to walk with him. And secondly, he wants to reveal him and his heart to you. Surely, that's his heart. Surely, it is his heart to speak to you, to reveal what he has for you. So much more than what you want to know. But too many times we just want to know the answers for our situation. And the, the, how God will provide in our situation. Because he's real. It's real challenges that you can face. Hello? But say, I want to walk with him. Doesn't matter where, what we're going to walk through. Doesn't matter where we're going to go. How, how high, how low. Um, yeah, okay, quickly. So, uh, if he's the shepherd and I'm the sheep. Not stupid sheep, but yeah, I'm the sheep. And you walk in that direction. But uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You walk in that direction. If I follow the shepherd, the closer. Yeah, yeah. One moonwalk. Just one place. So. The closer I come to him, the less I see there and the more I just see him. If you want to walk close to Christ, from here I can, I can, when he's walking, I can see when, yes, I will follow. No, no, I want to understand where he's going. God, where are you uh, going with me? What is my destiny? What is my future? I want to see. Hello? But the more faith you have in him, if you want to come close to him, you will have to deal with the fact of you in control of what you see. And more of him, less of me. More of him, less of me. And to walk close to him, I must take a lot of guts. Because many times it's, I'm just seeing him. I'm just following. I don't know where he's really going now. Thank you. And that doesn't mean, that doesn't mean you will know nothing. But if you really want to go with him, then sometimes you will understand less. It's not like you will understand more when you're coming close to him. When you're coming close to him, he's so jealous for your love that you will focus on him and not the discussion and not the understanding of everything. He desires you for an intimate relationship. Come on, my brother. Choose to walk with him. And you're choosing to walk with him you choose to turn your back on the depression and the, this and to turn your back on the success of yesterday because the voice of the success of yesterday took Israel every time, every time, every time away from him because they put their heart in the success and in the prosperity and at the end of the day, there they're gone again. Paul says to the Corinthians, this, this stuff is written down for you to learn from. So success can be very dangerous. But may God help you. That may God help you in the process that you will choose to walk with him and with nothing else. Amen. So the other scripture is um, Hebrews Hebrews 11 verse 6. Hebrews 11 verse 6. It says, The one that comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a Rewarder of those who diligently seek him. 
What is God saying? These two stuff. The, these two points. First of all, believe who I am. And then know that I'm a rewarder of those who seek me. But the first point, believe who he is. He wants to reveal himself. He wants to reveal himself. Oh man, the guys in, 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 in Egypt. Here Moses come. Okay. What must I tell them? Who are you? I am who I am. I reveal, I reveal myself to you. They got a revelation of who God is. He didn't tell the Israelites more promises and more promises of how Canaan looks and how uh, uh, honey and, and everything will be so nice in Canaan and, and, and more detail about the promises where sometimes we could sit in Egypt, you can feel like you're in Egypt and you want to go to Canaan, but you just trust God for more promises about Canaan and how Canaan must be and how Canaan wants to be. God wants to reveal himself in Egypt to you. And if you have a revelation of who he is, whoa, I saw what God did with the first, the second, the, the tenth plague, everything. And the fear of God is on you. And because of he, the revelation of who he is, Israel decided, oh, we will go with Moses. Even though we were intimidated for 400 years, 430 years, we will go with Moses. I will not fear the death that I saw every day in slavery. The unfairness of a lot of our rubbish. But I will go with God because God revealed himself to the Egyptians. But also God revealed himself to his nation. That they will fear him. That his fear will be on him. The fear, the respect. Not fear like the devils to run away. But the fear that will draw you closer. The respect that will draw you closer to him. Because you wow about God and it draws you closer. The enemy fears, but he needs to flee. Let that be so. You come closer, the enemy must flee, and you will be drawn into. You will be drawn, the enemy will flee. Amen. They say, I will be drawn, the enemy will flee. So it will be in Jesus' name. So believe that he is, and then he is a rewarder. So, because of who God is and what God did, there's the breakthrough to go. But the fear is on the nations in Canaan. They've lost their strength. They've lost their strength because they heard what God has done to the Egyptians, the word says. But by the time Israel came to the Jordan, they were so consumed with their own petty issues, with their moaning and their groaning and their discussions and their this and their that. That the discussions, the issues, the circumstances had such a loud voice. That the voice of God and his promises gone. <laughs> cannot hear it. Cannot believe it. Joshua, Caleb. The giants are our food. God promised us the land. Let's go and take the land. Yes. But the ten spies, the other ten, no. no. The voice of all the rubbish that they became intimate with, with. They walked with a moaning. They walked with a groaning. They walked with a negativity. They walked with this. And then they moan. And then God gives them. And they think it's because they moaned. Because they threw a tantrum that God gave. No, God would have given. Because he's the source. The manna of the quails was not because they threw a tantrum. Water from a rock was not because they threw a tantrum. Even though they threw a tantrum. But even if, if they would have rather just come to Moses and, and say, what does God want us to do in this situation? What does God want us to do? Tomorrow, God, what do you want me to do? Leave the tantrum, leave the moaning, leave the groaning, leave, leave the negativity. Because God will supply. But at the end of the day, after 10 times in, his, in the way that he supernaturally supplied to these guys, he said, because of the attitude and the moaning and the groaning around the time when I wanted to provide. Because of that, you will not enter the land. You will die in the desert. Only your children I will raise up. But in that whole time, even when the 12 spies went out, after the 40 years, when they really heard what the guys are thinking about them and their God. 
all the way, all the way, the enemy, all those giants, they, they feared already because they heard a testimony of what God did to the Egyptians. Your devils and giants and rubbish waiting for you in the future that wants to intimidate you have heard already about what Christ has done on the cross. They know they have nothing on you unless you decide to honor them. Unless you're walking with your issue keys and negativity and this and that and I don't have this and I have this struggle and that. Walk with that. And even though the enemy fear would fear your presence as you cross the Jordan into Canaan, you will lose. <laughs> because you didn't walk with God into that place. Remember when Israel, when they worshipped the golden calf, Moses went up. He was on the mountain. God said, do you know what they are doing there? Underneath, there, with the golden calf. And he, and he came and he said to God, God, I do intercession. You promised, you promised, you promised, you promised Canaan. Remember your promise to Abram, Isaac, and Jacob. Remember your promises. When he came down and he saw the rubbish that they did, he went up and this time, God, take my life, but please, please don't destroy them for your name's sake. Worship. Suddenly in, in this intercession, it's about God. And his fame. And who he is. God, if you destroy them, the, the world out there, they will say, oh, God had the capacity to bring them out. But he didn't have the capacity to bring them in. To lead them into Canaan. For your name's sake. So we pray in the name of Jesus as a king. Kings. King of kings. In the name of Jesus. But as a priest, under the high priest, we pray for your name's sake. Om Jesus Namenwil, for your name's sake, Lord Jesus, for the sake of your fame, for the sake of your name. As a priest, Moses came before God and said, God, even if you take my name out of the book of life, it's okay. But for the sake of your fame, don't destroy them. But in the beginning, when Moses said, God, forgive them. And he remind God about the promises, about what he can do and about the vision. And his intercession, you pray God for the promises and you stand on the promises that God has given you. That's good. But if that is the focus of your prayer, the focus of your intercession, the focus of your, of your faith, you know what God did? He said, I will give it to them, but I'm not going with. I will not walk with them. They can go and walk with my blessings, but I will not walk with them. Then Moses said, with all respect, sir, then we don't want your blessings. <laughs> Moses said, but God, then we're not going to Canaan. Oh, Moses, okay. When he goes down there to all these guys that suffered for 430 years, you know, uh, God said we can have everything that he promised long before the 430 years. He said we can have everything, but I said we don't want to go. Moses, you're dead meat. <laughs> it's gone with you. But he decided, I'm walking with God and that's it. Even if it costs me my life. Will you walk with God tomorrow even if it costs you your life? Will you walk with God even if it seems like God will put you to the test and say, do you, do you choose all the blessings that I've promised you? That not the devil promised you, what God promised you. Will you walk with that? Will you walk with me? God is a jealous God <laughs> for your love. <laughs> he wants a pure, beautiful walk with you. But you push in your prayer for the blessings and the circumstances to change. It can change. You can have his blessing. But you will not have his presence. God's going to help you. God's going to help me. Amen. Believe who he is. Let him reveal to you who he is. And he will reward you. So by the way, follow the good shepherd. Goodness and mercy, mercy will find you. They will look for you. You don't have to look for goodness and mercy. You look for God. Goodness and mercy will find you. Amen. Amen. Are we with one another? Please, man. Okay, so. Second last. We went for two, the third one, Hebrews 6. He confirmed it, his promises, with an oath. 
God did not, God did this so that by two unchangeable things, this is verse 18 of chapter 6 for those writing down. God did so that by two unchangeable things in which it is impossible for God to lie, we who have fled to take hold of the hope. Let's say, I will take hold of the hope. Take hold of the hope set before us that we may be greatly encouraged. Everybody say, greatly encouraged. I'm greatly encouraged because God's promises, he made an oath by himself. By himself. And he cannot change. Who God is, God cannot change. And said, my promises, you can believe what I said because you can believe who I am. If you can believe who he is, then you can take his promises. But if he must first prove himself to you, as if I'm sitting on an arrogant throne and God must first prove himself to me. Eesh! That's the rubbish. Are you with me? Come on. Let's believe who he is. Unchangeable things. Take hold of the hope set before us that we may be greatly be encouraged. The nations need to be encouraged and have to have encouragement in Jesus' name. We see that, amen, with COVID, how many people lost their businesses, lost everything in so many nations. Ukraine, Russia, things going on. Some people making billions, billions, billions. Well, they are those who are making the all the tanks and all the missiles and all the, and the rest in fear. May, through the Church of Christ, great encouragement come to the nations in this season. And with our year word, hope, that we believe God said that this is the season the near nations needs hope. But the unchangeable great encouragement must come from the church in every nation to the people. The great encouragement is not for the politics to change, for the corruption to go. The great encouragement must come from the church. That in the midst of whatever, God come and reveal yourself to us in this nation. And then, so by the way, God will fulfill his promises. And the breakthroughs, and the this, and the that. But the focus is God. Seek the kingdom, the rest will follow. Matthew 6, 33. Amen? Why? We have this hope. We have it. We will take hold of the hope. And we are greatly encouraged. Why? We have it. We have it. Let's say, I have it. No, say it as if you believe it. I have it. Okay. So we have this hope as an anchor for the soul. Firm and secure. Firm and secure. And the anchor and the anchor there for the boat. You know, there's a little bit of movement that can happen with the boat. But movement there, but there where the waves are crashing against the rocks. You cannot go there because the anchor will keep it just up to there. There's movement. Oh, I doubt a little bit, but uh, God has set the line. God has set the line. Hope will keep you there. But make sure you put your hope down. Make sure that the hope in you is the anchor for your soul. Your soul, your emotions. Sometimes here, there. Your intellect, your, your thinking patterns, your reasoning. All those stuffies. Yes, it will still sometimes go like this. But it cannot go there. Because you have unchangeable hope in you. You are anchored. There's an anchor for your soul. Amen. Great. Firm and secure. Okay, we're going to last one, Jeremiah, Jeremiah 21, no, 29, Jeremiah 29, and we all like and we all know verse 11, I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future, but let's go from verse 10, this is what the Lord says, when only 70 years are completed for Babylon. Oh, wow, oh, oh. I will come to you and fulfill my good promise. 
They were prophets saying, no, 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 uh, God's blessings will be there. God's blessings. You will not go into captivity. Everything will be fine. There will be no fire. There will be no fire. God said through Jeremiah, they're talking nonsense. Only after the 70 years, then this will happen. But remember one thing. Remember who I am. You will go for 70 years into captivity. But remember who I am. I am the one that has excellent plans for you. I am the one that is excited about your future. I am the one that gives you life. I am the one that will give you hope. That will give you a future. That's the God and the type of God who I am. I want to reveal myself to you. So remember when you go through the fire. Friends of Daniel. When you go through the fire, when I stand for the Lord, he will protect me. No. When I stand for the Lord, I will be thrown into the fire. It looks like all the others are protected in their compromise. I'm not protected. I must go through the fire. And what did they say? They said to the king, we will not bow. We will not bow. Sorry, we will not bow. And now God is able because we know who he is. We don't know what he's going to do. But we know who he is. And my life and my faith is in who he is. My God is able to protect us. But we want you to know, O oh king. Oh, I like that part the most. The first time I read it, I was so excited. <laughs> I said, whoa, Lord, help me. But I want you to know, king. You tell to hell. You tell to the, your circumstances. You tell to your weaknesses. You tell. I want you to know. Even if God don't save me, we will still not bow. We will still not bow before you. That's what he said. Our God is able, because we know our God. He's able to save us. But even if he doesn't, we will still not bow before you. But too many times we want first the circumstances to change. We want first things to fall in line before we go. Now that was in the past. Not ever again in the future. Amen. But... May God help you. May God help me in Jesus' name. So, only after this is fulfilled, this is completed, the 70 years in Babylon, I will fulfill my good promise to bring you back to this place. For, for, know who I am. Come. I, I know the plans. I know my thoughts. I know what I have in store for you. I know. I'm not confused about my destiny for you. God says, even though you will go through fire, even though you will go through fire, I'm not confused about what am I doing, what I am doing with you. This is for a purpose. That discipline is for a purpose. The discipline at Creare, where you now here and certain things <clears throat> allowed, certain things not, and there's certain stuff is that can happen. Discipline doesn't seem pleasant at the moment, many times, the word says. But I am not confused. Me, your father. Your God, I am not confused about what I'm doing with you. I know what's happening in my mind about you. I have a hopeful future for you. Believe your God. Believe who he is. And you will be able to go through the fire. And it's only in the fire that the world saw. There's a fourth person. It was Jesus, the angel of the Lord, with the three friends in the fire. When they were thrown in the furnace. Hey? Ah, Hello? When they were thrown in the fire. The church many times. My brother and my sister. I say to you prophetically in this season. Will be thrown in the fire. The church of Ukraine is in the fire. But maybe they stand for Christ. So that when Ukraine and Russia. When the guys look. They will see. Who's that one walking with him? Who's that one walking with her? Who's that one? They're not alone. And the world will see. You are not alone in the fire. There's somebody with you. Hello? May that be the testimony of your life. Then when you must go through the deepest fire or whatever, people will see there's someone with you. And that when you come out of the fire, nothing happened to you. But the biggest testimony is not first of all that nothing happened to you. The biggest testimony is who's the one walk? King with you in the fire. Will two walk together unless they agree? 
They said, we walk with God. If God is doing something nice to us, or even if we feel God is not going to do something nice to us, we're going to be burned up in that fire. Even if we are being burned up and have this hellish experience, we will walk with him into that place and honor him into that place. Let's leave the tantrums now, in Jesus' name. Let's say, tantrum, foot sack. <laughs> okay. That's not a holy word, or is it okay? Dr. Wall? <laughs> is it okay? All right, thank you. I will not be censored, and as I could. Honor sincere geplaatst. All right, what am I saying? I know the plans. To prosper you, not to harm you, plans to give you hope in the future. And then, then, next verse, you will call on me for all the goodies and it will happen. No, you will just call on me and come and pray to me and I will listen to you. You will seek me and you will find me when you seek me with all your heart and I will be found by you. Not I will just first give you all you... I will be found. I will make myself, I will bring myself into the place to say, okay, you can find me. I mean, he can, could have done it from the beginning. But if you seek me with your whole heart, if it's not cheap talk, if it's not a cheap walk, if it's not a cheap relationship, if you come with everything, if you come with integrity, if you come with your brokenness, not being a perfect man and a woman, no, but if you can come with your everything before me, I will make myself known for a quality walk with you through life, through that darkness, through the, this, through the success, because success can be the biggest curse. God's success in your life can be the biggest curse if you put your heart in that. But I will walk you through your success. That is a bigger miracle than walk with God through the valley of shadow death. Because in the valley, when there's the shadows and there's the, the crisis, oh, it's easier to grab hold of of God. Eh, hello. That's the obvious thing that you will do many times. But the biggest, bigger miracle is to walk with God through your success to the new face that he has for you. To walk through the prosperity that God has given you into the next phase that he has for you. And not to lose your heart and let go of his hand and your heart, your hands are so busy with your prosperity and your successes. May God set us up in the right way that your success and your prosperity and the finances and mammon and whatever will be servants for his purpose through your life. Can we take that? Can we believe that? Please, man. Okay, so you'll pray to me. I will listen to you. You will seek me and you'll find me when you seek me with all your heart. I will be found by you declares the Lord, and will bring you back from captivity. Bring you back from captivity. To where? I will gather you. Okay? For what, Lord? And I will bring you back in the place from which I carried you into exile. Here you are with God. God takes you and he puts you into the fire. Put you into this discipline, into the circumstances. As, as you will focus on him, 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 on a God that's not confused about his plans for you. He's in control. He has excellent plans for you. Then at the right time, he will take you, he will carry you back into his original plan. Where's, where did the original plan start? start? Adam and Eve. I will take you back. He took them, he chased them out. Not the devil chased them out. God chased them out. Hello. My relationship, my walk, it's not cheap. My love is not cheap. It's not God wants to be spiteful. It's not God uh, will not just forgive. Why can he not just forgive? Because he cannot be but true to himself. And he, his love is quality. His love is pure. He lo his love is beautiful. His love is clean. He cannot change himself now. Because man chose the rubbish. Now he must deal with the rubbish. So that you can come closer for quality, intimate Walk with purity and cleanness before God. Amen. He desires that. But for that, there's processes that's going to happen. So I will gather you. 
I will gather you. And in the gathering of you, I know he's talking here about a nation that will be gathered. I want to say it's you also. He wants to gather your, this thought that is in temptation. Shh. That, that stuff is in that area of your life that's in depression. This area where, you, where there's a little bit of greediness. This area where there's a little bit of jealousy. These two, three, five areas that's excellent with the Lord, man. Wow, oh, with worship and about this and about that and about that. You are having breakthroughs. But he wants to bring all of that together. And take all that parts of you and bring it together. And take you into the original plan. The original dream with him. Where in a sincere, beautiful, simplistic way, you can walk with him through your valley. Through your success, through your destiny, through your weakness, through your shame. That's your God. Let's bow their heads. Father God, you have such an excellent plan. You have such an excellent plan. God, you are not confused about our lives. And even if we would go through a lot of situations where we feel totally confused about what are you doing, Lord? Thank you for your grace, your mercy, your mercy over our lives, Lord. That we can just know you are so, so in control. I pray for every heart in this place right now. Holy Spirit, show them. Where are they walking with other, other hojas, with, with, with the world, with the opinion of the world, with a fear of rejection, with a fear of intimidation, the fear based on, on hurts, where they're walking with their hurt, walking with their circumstances, walking with their intimidations, and not walking with you. God, help them to turn around and to walk away, away, in Jesus' name. Let's say, I'm walking away, in the name of Jesus. And thank you, Father, they can take your hand today, for today... From today, they will not be the same anymore. They will not be the same anymore. They will walk with love. And your love will deal with the fear. Thank you, Father. We will walk with your peace that will deal with the anxiety. We, we will walk with your joy that will deal with the negativity and depression. Right now, in Jesus' name. We choose that. We take that, Father. God, this is precious men and women sitting here, God. And your hand is on each one of them. I pray that they will experience your precious touch. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Take them into the place where you are. And creating us. Creating us a clean heart. Creating us from our spirit. A hunger for you. A hunger for your word. God that we're going to be so surprised. In what you're going to do. In us and through us. Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Is an excellent opportunity with you. And we take that today. In Jesus name. As all say. Amen. Amen. Let it be so. Give God a praise offering. Amen.